welcome into Saints Channel Studios. Uh, it's a Lenny. We've got uh, Selly, we've got Desi, and Ari, three sisters. And I want to start there. How is that performing and singing together as sisters? Maybe you, Selly, you're the oldest. <laughs> yeah. You get to speak for the family. We love it. It comes with its challenges, but there's something special about creating something together. I don't know if that's the same for all sisters, but especially for us, it's just really fun. Like we can sing as soloists, but having all three of us back together finally has been so different and so amazing. Now she said, Desi, she said back together finally. So what, what is that? What's that all about? Um, so we actually had a lot of times where one of us was like missing as we were kind of singing. Like together. kidnapped or what are we talking about <laughs> no, here? No, 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 no. <laughs> So we each served like a, a mission, so a church service for, for our church. Uh -huh. And so you leave for a year and a half and you go to somewhere like away from home. We each actually went to South America. So it's just like we overlapped. Sally went first, then I was gone for a year and a half, then Ari was gone for a year and a half. Oh, wow. And so, now we're back together. And yeah, it's, it's awesome. been like four and a half years. So so this is, this is a group four and a half in years in the making and then, and then some, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. So let me ask you, as, as you let, as you left, you kind of set the example, and then was it the expectation that you would kind of follow suit, or how did that go? It's more just like, since vocally we're so different, like I'm low, she hits the high stuff, and uh -huh. she's kind of, she can do both. I think it just really pushed us to learn different things. So I don't know, I think we're pretty equal, but vocally it helped helped us learn a lot more. And then you come along and you're like, hey, you guys are home now, but I'm out. Forget <laughs> it. I mean, I went out while Desi was actually still out. So mm -hmm. we were there together for a little bit, which was super nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then the reuniting, what is the homecoming like? Sally, you want to talk about that <laughs> when finally everyone's back in the same house? Well, finally, everybody comes back and it's coronavirus <laughs> time, quarantine. <laughs> so I, I'm actually married. So I live in a different house. And so I didn't see them for about two weeks. We had yeah. to quarantine. Yeah, and rough. then we finally got to be all together. And it's just been really fun creating music ever since. And so you got to be together. Did they move in with you and your husband? Is that how that worked? No, no. We just, we were fully quarantined. So we knew we didn't have the virus. And so we would just um, switch off. Sometimes they'll come to my house. Sometimes I'll head to our family house. So. Cool. Cool. What, what was music like in your family growing up? Is that where it started? I yes. mean, we've always <laughs> just loved like singing Disney songs and stuff like that. We'd always sing like A Dream is a Wish, Your Heart Makes and stuff like that. And then... I don't know, just one day we were on a road trip and our parents were like, hey, like, they're actually not that bad. Like, maybe <laughs> let's get them into lessons. And so that's how we started, like, actually singing. I like the uh, the name, Alenyi, but I have no idea if it means something. I know that I've worked it over and over and over again to make sure I'm <laughs> saying it correctly. But w what's the meaning behind it? Um, so when we were younger, we used to just call ourselves Shine. But then we realized that was a little kiddish. So our dad <laughs> knows a bunch of different languages and he knew that... Um, in Greek, Eleni is kind of similar. It means ray of sunlight. Huh. And so he was just like, what about Eleni? And we were like, that's really cool. No yeah. one's going to know what that means, but it's really yeah. cool. And so it's kind I don't of know, a secret stuck. message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just we really, really like wanted it. to sing positive music as a group. And so we wanted that message of light. Um, but Eleni helped us make it more modern, but still has that same meaning to us. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's weird enough that it's the first thing that pops up when you type it in, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get all the SEO that yeah, you yeah. want, right? Google searches, it's you guys, that's it's what comes true. up. Mm -hmm. So uh, talking about being hope and inspirational, why, why is that the focus of the group? I think just like our whole lives, we've just had like this desire within us to just help people and be like a light. Like you look out and I feel like every day the world is just getting harder and harder. There's so many struggles. And so if we can make just like, a little difference by lighting the world with one or a couple songs, like each song will make a difference. So we think like as imperfect as we are, we can try our very best. Yeah, mm -hmm. Music can make a big difference on your mood. So when you're listening to music that isn't that great or has some words that you don't feel comfortable with, it just changes your mood. And definitely songs that have light in them. There are lots of singers out there that have lots of light when they sing. We've always loved that. So we always want to be like that, looked up to those singers. Mm. You guys uh, each having the opportunity to serve um, missions, church missions, service missions as you helped other people. Let's talk a little bit about that. That's obviously a time where you can bring light into people's lives. You guys each did it, so you're each going to be put on the spot, but <laughs> the order you go in doesn't matter. Uh, but maybe share a, an inspiring story from your, your time serving. We'll start with the first one. Uh, it's more fresh. Yeah, more yeah. fresh. Huh? Wow. I mean, there is so many experiences. I think just like seeing so many people just broken and having hard times. I remember that 
there's just, I mean, so many experiences, but I remember that there was just this one lady and we had met her and she was, she was so depressed. Mm. And I think she had never really felt any joy, real joy in her life. And when we just started talking to her about Christ and about like how her life can change by just being more positive and letting that light in, it was just amazing because it was literally like a light had consumed her just completely and she changed her persona and everything. It was just amazing to see someone change completely all by the gospel. All right, putting you on the spot then, Desi. Well, kind of like Ari said, the whole point of a mission is to be able to help people feel that love that that we do have from a Heavenly Father and from Jesus Christ. And so I think just, I don't know, kind of more personal, I think it's something that like, I think sometimes I'm very closed off to my emotions and I don't like people to see that. And like, sometimes you think you are alone in things that you go through in life. And for me, I, I went to Chile mm -hmm. and it, um, it was really cool to meet lots of different people and that they actually feel the same way that I do and that all of us can connect on that same level that, that we do have someone who loves us and that we do have value, we have purpose. And we do have an identity. And so I think it was really cool for me to be able to kind of find more of my identity while helping other people find theirs. And mm. I think that's something very beautiful that connects us all as humans because we're different, but we all come from the same God. Yeah. All right, then, Sally, it's to you. <laughs> I went to Brazil, so oi a todos meus brasileiros. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Had to uh -huh. say that. But... Um, I honestly think that one of the biggest things I found on my mission is that God is always there, even in the little things. And I mean, we had moments, I serving in Brazil, it's a walking mission. So you're just walking everywhere. And I really learned that God, he loves every single one of his children. Your goal as a missionary is to go and have people come closer to Christ. But sometimes I felt really strongly that I was supposed to go to a person and just be kind to them and try and bring them to the gospel. Um, and they just wouldn't want anything to do with it. Mm. But God still wanted me to leave and say, God loves you. He wanted that message to his children, even those that didn't want to come unto him at that time. He, he wanted them to feel his love, even if it was just going to be in that moment where I was there with my companion or um, with other people around me that he wanted to send that message through whoever could do it. And so I think that's something we definitely want to do through our music is just be genuine. But whenever we hear that little voice in our head saying, hey, make sure you sing with more love or hey, say that God loves you, um, that we really want to be those messengers whenever God wants to send that message to someone that they can just feel his love in that moment. Yeah. Sometimes there are dark times though, right? We Can we all agree with that? Maybe it's just yes. me, but uh, no. how, do you, how do you guys find yourself lifting yourself up from those dark times? They're inevitable for everyone. <laughs> Sometimes a song can help, but other times it, it takes more than a song. Mm -hmm. We've actually been, because we're really close and we actually talk a lot. We get really deep. We're very sensitive people. <laughs> so um, we've actually been talking a lot about how everything in life is a choice. And I think we forget that power that we have to, to choose for ourselves, how we can actually feel. And obviously things guide it. But I think that for me, I've found that um, just looking at the things around me and being grateful for them helps me to be able to choose more. Like, I'm really happy because I have all this stuff around me, like my sisters and yeah. got you, Richie. Oh, stop. stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Well, even, even when it's hard to make that choice or you're trying to make that choice and you're just not making it, you can't get yourself to get up and do the things you need to do in the day. Yeah. It's just, I mean, family is a huge thing. I mean, for us, especially, especially as singers, um, sometimes it's hard to separate like the business aspect and being sisters part. We have to remind ourselves like, hey, we need to be sisters because that connection as a sister or as a family member, you just lift and you didn't even know. It's just since birth, you've been with that person and you just know how to lift them up. And that those are the people I love to rely on is my family. I think it's pretty cool too, where you guys are sisters. You probably in some cases don't even have to say anything. You can just tell that the other person is off. Uh, Ari, maybe a little bit about that. Have you ever... I mean, yeah, it's been it's been kind of crazy, too, because since we were all gone for a bit, we had to kind of re-get to know each other in a couple of ways. <laughs> but it's been super interesting, just like since I've been back, that we've been really able to be open and vulnerable with each other and just be like, hey, like, this is the way I react to things or like maybe try and be a little bit more patient or things like that. So it's just super helpful to know that I can just trust them and they'll trust me and just 
communicating, but I think it's just been super helpful. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about inspiration, sometimes uh, songwriters will talk about like a, a divine, uh, divinely inspired song. Have you guys ever had an opportunity where you're writing and you come away from something and you're like, boy, that, that was not me that wrote that. Who wants to talk about that experience? Well, I'm just going to say, honestly, that's kind of how we feel with every yeah. song that we do. <laughs> oh, wow. But um, one of the coolest experiences was actually one of our most well-known songs, which is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing mixed with Haida Kolob. Mm -hmm. And we actually got to do that with our really good friend, Sarah Young. And um, she's really good at the piano. And it was just like, I don't know, she's good at the piano, piano we're good at singing, but like, we didn't, we're not like that good. So obviously we know it wasn't like from us. Like it happened super quickly too. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about that. Cause yeah, we really, we really love those songs. Aerie, it was Aerie's choice. She's like, I, these are my favorite hymns. I'm going to mix them. It's true. I will and that. that wasn't a thing that was really done was mixing hymns or even doing covers of hymns and putting them on YouTube. So we were like, okay, let's go for it. And so we were trying um, really hard on it and things were flowing, but that last bit where we mix Come Thou Fountain and If You Could Hide a Cola and we mix them together. We just really wanted to mix it, but we couldn't figure it out. So we stayed up super late one night and we were just kept trying and trying and trying. And then all of a sudden we just came up with it. And we just knew it wasn't us because we'd been trying for hours and it wasn't like, oh, we finally figured it out. It was like someone helped us. And even with Sarah playing the piano, it just all came together. We like went separately and came together and just how God could take people from different households and even in the same family and just like connect us all so that this song could turn out way more than we ever could have made it. Yeah. I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but we have the three of you and we also have Sarah here as well. <laughs> do we think we can maybe get you guys to perform that number for Let's us? Let's do it. For sure. Right. Twinkling of an eye And then 
Absolutely beautiful. Uh, ladies, Thank the you. thing that I love about that is hearing it as you guys sing, um, kind of like symbolic maybe of how your guys' lives have been for the few years, right? Like mm-hmm. one came and then the That's other left true. and stopped singing and then <laughs> came in and, and kept singing. Do you guys, do you, do you ever just stop and think, wow, is this is this real life? Like, is this really where we're at in life? A lot. Yes. Yeah. I feel like sometimes I'm like, wait, like, are we really just like singing together and able to like help so many people and help ourselves and grow our relationship. It's just like, I think it's such a big blessing that, I mean, maybe sometimes we've taken it for granted, but when you really like recognize it, it's just, it's such a great blessing in our lives. Sometimes it can be a lot of pressure though, because it's like all three of us and we need three of us. It can't, I mean, we've talked like, we can't just have one split off and be a soloist (laughs) like other bands. Like it has to be us three because that's where it's like the most special And so we always like make sure we remember like the reason why we're doing it when we make other life decisions and just making sure that this is a priority to us. Well, Sally, you started it because you got married and (laughs) then it's like they're going, wait a minute, she's going to be gone. How how do you guys balance that? I don't know how we do, but we do it so well. (laughs) Just honestly, I think it does help the fact that we are really close and we do try to spend lots of time together anyways. And so we just really try hard to travel back and forth and do stuff together or through calls even just anything we can Mm -hmm. monday through friday we're together somehow random times of the day every day but Uh we're together (laughs) do you ever uh is are there ever what's the word i'm looking for trials in between you guys as you're as you're trying to make that and maybe there's sometimes a a busier time or or the difficulty between the you guys that you have i mean it wouldn't be life if it wasn't like (laughs) a little rocky and stuff i think there's definitely like hard times where it's like I don't know, it's hard to coordinate times or coordinate different things, but I think just that's where we all put in our effort and sacrifice a little bit more here, a little bit more there, and just try to really work together. Yeah. Yeah. I also think a little bit earlier what you were saying, um, we really have to be aware of each other's feelings too, because I think we're 
like our insecurities can come out. Mm -hmm. And so just like noticing that and being able to help each other, because I think that that in itself is like an obstacle just because sometimes in our heads, we're just thinking like, wow, like I do not sound good on this. Like (laughs) Sally should sing that. And like, I think it's just really good to always be motivating each other. And that's kind of what helps us continue. How do you guys make those decisions when it comes to a song? If you've written it, is whoever writes it gets to sing the lead or how do you work it out? We were talking about this a little earlier. We were trying to remember. And we remember when we were first younger and we were trying to get into the singing and the music industry, um, we'd come across a lot of mentors or lots of advisors that would tell us certain things. And the funny thing is we didn't really follow any of them. Like they would say, I mean, you need to have one person that's the lead singer and it's never going to work all three of you. And I mean, we have an amazing vocal coach that has helped us so much in helping our voices all be at the same potential. And Mm -hmm. almost from like a young age, we decided that We don't want just one person singing high, one person singing melody, one person singing low. We want us all to be able to do it because there's such a different feeling when Desi sings high or when Ari sings low and vice versa. And so we always just switch it around. Sometimes we'll try and each sing at once. Then we'll be like, nah, Desi sounded best there. I like your emotion. I like things like that. Or sometimes it's like, okay, we're going to push like one of us to like sing a little bit higher, do things (laughs) we're not as comfortable with just so that we can like grow as well. Not always just be comfortable. It's fun that way too. (laughs) You guys talked uh, a little earlier about um, with the coronavirus, with the COVID-19, with the pandemic, whatever we want to call it, how there was some mandated time apart. Additionally, you guys each served those service missions and were time apart. Talk about how you deal with being alone. Oh man, I think that, I think just like everyone feels alone at some point in their lives or lots of times. I think What's really helped me is just knowing that even when we're not there, like physically or anything like that, like we're always there for each other. I know I can always rely on them. And more than anything, like I'm never actually alone because I always have God too. And so I think that he's just like really our rock and we're just like the little rocks around him too, to just build each other up and be that help because there are days that you do feel alone or you just, it's hard, but it's really nice to have not only God, but people that can help you. Yeah. As cliche as it sounds, it really is something where it's like the little things like the sun just on your face and you're like, that's God right there helping me. (laughs) And actually, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but like when we are apart, I feel like you guys are still with me because I just... I constantly look back to old memories and I just start cracking up out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, like, I think we're just always together. Mm -hmm. And so you just like always reflect back to something funny or weird we did like the day before. I remember when Sully went on her mission, it was so hard for me. I had Desi and we're all best friends, but... I had to fall asleep every single night to our come off out if you could hide cold. I was like, that's so. weird that I listen to ourselves, but not to listen to myself. It was for them. And I just felt like connected to them again. So that yeah. was nice. Mm-hmm. I think it's hard being alone. Like going back to that concept is we really like, we rely so much on each other and we love each other, but we did have to go through a period of time learning to rely on ourselves just by ourselves, like us and God. But I think sometimes when you're not used to that relationship, just you and God, you don't know what to do. You don't know that he's there. You don't know how to recognize him. And so um, those service missions we did helped a lot, but also just going different paths in our lives, different colleges, different schools, being married. We're going to keep finding moments where we're going to be alone and not together. And I think that the cool thing is, even though we've all experienced who we want to be when we're alone, we come together and it's in harmony. And we find that we complement each other with the people that we want to become. We don't just want to be this group forever. We are three independent people that just want to grow closer to God and find our purpose that he has for us. Mm-hmm. I love within those confines that you guys have also written original music and that the three of you have created something, right? Not to say that a mashup or a you know, combination mm-hmm. of songs isn't that thing, but this is, you, you create individual songs and melodies and harmonies that Mm -hmm. come from just the three within you. Talk about the songwriting experience. Well, the funny thing is when we were younger, we just didn't know how to write songs. Um, We just, we struggled a lot. Desi was a little more natural with it, but (laughs) Ari and I struggled a lot. We all struggled. We could never write an original song, so we just kept doing covers after covers. Um, But after we had that time apart, 
it strengthened us and we can actually come together and it starts to flow. And it's actually a really cool creative process. A lot of times we like to listen to instrumentals we like and we'll get inspiration from that or just decide Mm -hmm. we want this kind of mood or things like that. And then the lyrics kind of follow and it all kind of falls in place. Yeah. I think that it also helps to have friends who are also really good at music and somehow you just get inspired by them or even just being more connected and in tune with your own emotions I feel like really helps because we're we we talk about how we feel like imposters because we don't know anything about music so it's like how do we we have the right to create a song but just the fact that we're humans and we have those feelings and we know other people can connect to them too and somehow it helps us and it can help them I think that's something that um helps us to be able to connect personally and create a song together. Ari, you want to weigh in on it? Yeah, I mean, I think that something I really like too, just so everyone knows, is like when we get together and we do our harmonies or things, like lots of times they are not good. It's like you go through this period and me especially, I'll just say it. Like I am probably the worst one at harmonies right now, but I'm working on it. But it's like, sometimes we get together and I'll just be like, and it just like, it doesn't work. So it's like, I don't know. I think it's just like life. Like it's not going to be perfect. Like you have to work through it and practice and things like that. But that's what I like is that just, I don't know, it doesn't have to be perfect for it to turn out good. I think out of the weakest things, that's Mm. where God can make the greatest strengths. So I'm hoping because the three of you are in the studio and we have (laughs) Kaysen on the guitar (laughs) that you guys will be willing to do one of those original numbers? Of yes. course. Mm-hmm. So you were talking earlier about how there's like moments where we were like alone during Corona and stuff. And while we were alone, I remember that I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to write a song because I had tried so hard, like my whole life and it just was never coming. And I remember I just like knelt down and I was just like, I remember that scripture that says, if he ask, like believing you can receive, you will. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to have a lot of faith right now. And I was like, <laughs> Heavenly Father, please, like, I just really want to write a song that can help people through like these times. And it came to my mind, like one of my favorite chapters in the scriptures, Second Nephi 4, And I just read through that and I was like, man, like I'm not the best with words, but these words are great. So I was like, let's use these. And I just, I don't know how, but I came up with a song in like an hour. And I was like, I guess that's when you know it was not me because I would have (laughs) never done it on my own. But I wrote a song and it's called Awake My Soul. And my sisters helped me sing it so we can sing that for you guys. Great. Yeah.
my salvation rejoice so heart of mine awake my soul awake my soul no longer to in sin he'll make me whole the rock of my salvation Joy so hard of mine. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, she did good. Yeah. I love not only the song, which is gorgeous, but being able to to know sort of the backstory behind it, to know that that it's a comfort for feeling alone. And I love, you guys probably do this for a technical thing, but I love that you guys are so carefully watching each other as you sing. <laughs> to, to me, obviously, there's the insta or the musical part of it, right? That you're making sure that you're getting the exits and entrances correct. But there's also sort of symbolic, something symbolic to me about, you know, I've got your back, sis. No matter what. And, and, and I noticed that too, before you guys each started singing that you kind of, you know, comfort with the hand on the back, knowing that you guys have each other. It's a beautiful thing that you have being able to be sisters and being able to perform and, and, and create this. What do mom and dad think about the whole situation? They love it. Yeah, they like it. <laughs> They've been there since the beginning, pushing us and always helping us. I mean, since the very beginning, one of our the most amazing stories of us is we really could have not turned out to be great singers, but my parents are firm believers in developing the talents that God has given you. And so when they first heard us singing even a little well, they were like, let's put him into singing lessons. And so we started, but we were so nervous to go alone that we went together. Mm. And that's how the group started. And <laughs> every true. single day after that, my mom waking up at five with us, making sure we're doing our warm ups, yeah. and <laughs> making sure worse. we're practicing. <laughs> every everything. performance, everything, they're just always there always for us. Been there. Yeah. The music industry is a lot of fun. I want to get to the fun stuff in a minute, but what's the hardest thing that you guys have experienced, either alone or together, as you've been trying to make a go of everything? That's a good question. I think one thing, like, not on us, but kind of more things we deal with is that because we don't know musical backgrounds, sometimes we'll get shoved around a little bit when we're at performances or things or people don't know what we're doing. That's, like, the only thing is because we're such, like, kind of – more timid or more, I don't know, just like people that won't really stand up for if, because we don't really know what's going on in the yeah. first place, but <laughs> that sometimes we find ourselves not speaking up as much. And that's something that we've really had to push ourselves with is when something isn't the way we like it or up to our standards, we really have to speak up and make sure that they know that um, this is how we do it and how we like it. <laughs> I think something too is just like, I don't know, with all the good comments that people say, there's also lots of like bad comments or yeah, negative Yeah, don't read things. the comments. I mean, sometimes I think it's good to just like laugh about it. Sometimes I'm like, you're right. I did sound really bad on that part, but you know, it's okay. So it's just like learning to laugh at like our mistakes, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about for you, Desi? Something in there that is harder for you? I think... Um, digging deep within yourself and knowing that you like need to put more of a part in because I think sometimes maybe we need to believe in ourselves more and come up with like ideas and share them more with each other or when we work with other people I don't know that's just kind of the first thing that popped into my head there's a lot that's kind of hard sometimes but I I think it ends up being a good experience either way. So it's hard so much because the the songs you guys have created them, those original pieces, like there there is a piece of you within that song, mm -hmm. and so you sort of offer it up and go, "Please love this child that <laughs> we true. have created." And when people are like, "Oh, that that baby's ugly" or whatever the thing may be, you go, "Oh no, wait, you don't understand. You're not feeling the same thing that I'm mm -hmm. feeling." And and it's hard to continue to be vulnerable when when there will be people that will be like that. Sure. What, what's your favorite parts? Wow, so many. We'll go reverse. I love start. like the middle of a song. The first part of the song, you're just so nervous, or at least we, I mean, people think, oh, do you get nervous? Like we get super nervous. So the first part's a little shaky. And then in the middle of the song, you just like feel calm and you feel like I got this and we can do this. That's just like the best feeling is when the nervous part transitions to the calm and you just feel in your element and you feel like, I don't know, the song's 
going to be what it wants to be in that moment. Cool. Kind of going off of that, I I think that I really like just the fact that um, we've gotten to the point where, I mean, we're perfectionists, but I think just knowing like I really felt that and I meant what I was singing and just feeling that connection um, with each other and with God, I think that's my favorite part overall. I love those answers. <laughs> um, mine, so many good parts. I think something I love is when you just have this idea in your head and it's just like, I have no idea how people are going to understand what I'm thinking, <laughs> but they somehow do. And we just come up with something like, I don't know, even better, like with Sarah or Kason or anyone we work with when it just works and it clicks and it's like, wow, like it turned out better than it was <laughs> in my head. That's like my mm-hmm. favorite moment. Now, I'm hoping because I know that you guys, uh, when you did those service missions, that you served in different countries and were able to learn different languages, si. two Spanish, one Portuguese. Can we blend? Even though I won't understand a single word, <laughs> uh, I'm wondering if you guys would be willing to do a little bit of music in those languages for me to try and, and figure out. We can try. Yeah. Uh, let's hear it. Which one do you know in Portuguese? Um, I stand all amazed. I think I can do that okay. one. Or, Lord, I would follow thee. Do I stand all maze? You can do like the first part in Portuguese and we'll come in in Spanish. Okay. Let's see if I can remember the Portuguese part. Okay. I sombro me causo amor que me da Jesus confuso esto pela graça e pela luz e tremo ao pensar que por mim sua vida deu por mim tão humilde seu sangue ele derramou com a sombra que por amar-me assim muriera ele por mim quando sombro sou eu que deu por mim not perfect but <laughs> that was great put you on the spot and you guys delivered that was amazing <laughs> All right. It's Eleni. It is uh, Selly and Desi and Ari. Thank you so much for being here as part of Saints Channel Studio. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Richie. (laughs) 